Hi everyone, my name is Vadim, I'm a petroleum engineer. So my aim and aim of this channel is to help you to understand the basic concepts and to improve your knowledge in reservoir engineering and petroleum engineering. For any professional contacts, you can write me by using an email, the link is below the video. Today we will study Darcy's law, we will find out what it is, how it is obtained, parts of the expression and restrictions and how it is used. Also, you will get an exercise to self-check. So, in 1855-56, Henry Darcy, a French scientist, developed a fluid flow equation that defines the relation between the velocity of fluid flow and major reservoir and fluid parameters such as permeability and viscosity. Since that time, it became one of the main mathematical equations for reservoir engineer. This is a general form of it. This law is used to derivate other equations to calculate flow rate of oil and gas wells of course with different conditions and flow regimes. For example, the radial form of Darcy's law for pseudo-steady state regime and average reservoir pressure for oil well. We know that Henry Darcy was a French scientist who built a water distribution system for Dijon town where he was born. Uh, the ascent in a system was acting as a filter which cleans the water. So what was the experiment and how he got it? He designed a column with sand pack by injecting fluid, in this case water, in the sand pack, he established that the velocity of the flow was directly proportional to the difference in manometric heights. Initially, he didn't change the fluid, only type of the sand, and therefore defined constant called k. Other experiments with different fluids allowed to differentiate coefficient interpermeability and dynamic viscosity of the injected fluid. Well, the viscosity we know from school physics, but what is permeability? Permeability is a property of porous medium that measures the capacity and ability of the formation to transmit fluids. From the picture we can see how fluid is seeping into rock and passing through it. The right picture is a cross-section of that rock. It becomes obvious that fluid is flowing between rock grains, the space that can accommodate and transmit the fluid called pores. If we compute the sum of the area in cross-section for which fluid is flowing, we will obtain permeability value. Permeability is measured in Darcy units, 1 Darcy equal to 10 to the minus 12 power square meters. Importantly to know that the velocity in equation is an apparent velocity. An apparent velocity is determined by dividing flow rate and cross-sectional area across which fluid is flowing. Therefore, we can combine these two equations and get a new one from which we can express the permeability. We find out that permeability can't be measured directly, it can only be calculated from other parameters which are commonly known – the rate, the viscosity of the fluid, the pressure difference, the length of the sample. Darcy's law applies only when some conditions exist. Let's figure out them. The first one is laminar flow. Osborne Reynolds in 1876-83 found out that the flow regime depends on the velocity of the flow, diameter and kinematic viscosity of the fluid. In practice, we do not calculate Reynolds number because, in general, there takes place laminar flow of water and oil in reservoirs. But for gases, there can be a turbulent flow regime, that's why this equation is compatible only for incompressible or slightly compressible fluids. The second one is incompressible fluids. According to fluids, there are incompressible fluids like water, slightly compressible like oil, and compressible fluids like gases. In practice, it is an assumption to use it for oil too. The correct formula must also contain a compressibility constant in the equation, but some additional calculations showed us that there is really small difference in results for oil. That's why we can use directly this law for oil too. The third one is steady state flow. According to pressure disturbance with time from well bore into reservoir, there are three flow regimes – transient, pseudo-steady state and steady state. The transient means that pressure differential is a function of time. Pseudo-steady state means that pressure differential changes at a constant rate of value. And steady state means that there is no changing in pressure differential in time. The equation on the top of the slide can be applicable only for steady state regime. For other regimes, it will have another forms. And the last one is homogeneous formation. You can meet such assumption in most of the books, but in my opinion, it doesn't have so much significance. Because even at Darcy's experiment, there wasn't an ideal homogeneous formation. The ideal theoretical formation consists of uniform spherical grains, so from the experiments you will get an average probability of all the layers. This is what we're trying to get, basically.
I'm offering you to solve this exercise to check yourself. In this case, the flow also takes linear direction, the fluid is water, and we have laminar flow. You should calculate the flow rate and you can choose the units by which you will compute it. Remember that in field units you should use an additional constant in equation. You can write your answers and questions in the comments below. Thank you, goodbye.